Hi, and welcome to Screen Time Reset. I'm your host, Lauren Pear. While the research on the harms of screen time is piling up, the government, both on the state and federal level, has for the most part been missing in action. The US is lagging behind Asian countries that are mandating classes for parents and young children, and even going as far in the case of Taiwan as making laws against parents permitting their children use of excessive screen time. Officials in the UK are also talking about taking action as social media has been implicated in promoting self-harm among teens. Fortunately, though, a few bills are beginning to pop up here in the States. Maryland passed a law last year requiring schools to hear about best practices for screen use. And here in Hawaii, this session, Senator Ruderman, Russell Ruderman, introduced Bill SB 433, which mandated and funded the Department of Health uh, to create an information campaign on the effects of screen time, which is the first such bill in the country. It made its way through its first three hearings and was just one hearing away from becoming law. But unfortunately, the House Finance Committee opted not to hear it. Today is the deadline, so it almost certainly is not going to happen. But it was a good first step, and we have with us today in studio Senator Russell Ruderman, Chair of the Health and Human Services, committee and a representative of the Pune district here to talk to us about it. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Senator. Thank you for having me. Nice making time in your busy schedule. Thank you. Absolutely. So um, let's just first talk a little bit about the intention of the bill and what it uh, set out to do. Well, uh, I think the intention of the bill is to bring some awareness to the concerns over uh, the overuse of screens, particularly among children. You know, uh, especially trying to, I think it, it, it was going to create a public awareness campaign to basically educate uh, parents and educators and kids about some of the hazards of spending too much time on screens. Right. Yeah. And um, we actually work together on this bill. And, uh, and the other piece um, is a website, <coughs> right? It was going to create a website with all the research parents put together. Right. Um, and by the way, Lauren, I have to give you credit. This bill wouldn't have existed if it weren't for you and your advocacy on this issue. So I'm ha really in support of your efforts, although I share your concerns about it. Thank you. Yeah. And I thank you as well, because yeah. I'm not a senator. So I don't get to introduce bills. And uh, it was so great that you're supportive of this issue and that you're looking out for our cakey. And um, it's clear your heart is in the right place on it. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and before we talk a little bit more about the bill, just I was going to mention that you have a young daughter yourself, right? I do. I have a three-year-old girl. I have uh, three older daughters in their 20s, but I all started all over again. I have a three-year-old, and uh, I'm observing the uh, effects of screen addiction firsthand. You know, we, we are, I think, more conscious than perhaps the average parents, but nevertheless, it's, it's pervasive, and uh, she's pretty attached to her screen. She borrows mom and dad's iPads if she's not watching TV. And, you know, it, it's so tempting as a parent, just like we used to park kids in front of the TV. It's the electronic babysitter. Well, now it's even more so because Completely. they're much more attached to it and much longer entertained. And it's more mobile, right? Like, I grew up with a lot of TV, but the yeah. TV stayed in one, stayed place, in one place, and the yeah. iPad comes right. with you. That's right. Um, and, and have you received, like, has your pediatrician uh, talked to you about screen time and the effects that it has? No, we've never had any discussion with our pediatrician or, or anybody else for that matter. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't really come up. So I think it's an issue that's been unaddressed. Yeah. And if, if I haven't been made aware of it, I'm sure it's probably true for most people, you know. Um, Certainly no, no the one's... consensus of the parents I talk to. Yeah. So, so your preschool hasn't brought it up either? Well, my preschool has a policy, which we really like of. They don't do any videos or allow any screens during that's the daytime. Great. So that's great. She is in preschool. She spends uh, seven or eight hours a day there. And that's away from screens, interacting with live people. And uh, I, I, I'm very happy about that fact and yeah. appreciative. I don't know how many other preschools or... Uh, or daycares, forgive me, she's in daycare, not in preschool yet. I don't know how many of those have that policy, but I appreciate it. It makes, you know, whatever happens in the evenings, at least I know she was away from that screen all day long. Definitely. Yeah. I know that plenty of daycares do have screens, because I've talked to a do lot they? of parents. Mm. 
where that's the case. And I know that just in general, finding childcare can be very tough on mm. the islands. But certainly, if you find a place that doesn't have screens, that is really nice. Because like you said, that's a huge chunk of the day yeah. that you know. And that commitment means a little bit more work for the supervisors there. Uh, but uh, more effort, more work. But yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they haven't talked to you about the, the harms or oh, effects no. of screens. Oh, no, no. Nobody ever has. Yeah. Except you. <laughs> So that's, I just think that's so interesting to me that just shows why the bill is necessary, mm -hmm. right? Because yes. parents are not being warned about it. Like, you know, all you know it's, it's almost as if we're so aware of the opioid crisis now. It's, it's almost as if it's, it, there's a new such crisis unfolding before our eyes that we have not begun to address yet. And I yeah. think we have not begun to address this. Although this bill is a start, right? That's right. It is a start. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so getting back to it, you know, your daughter and that personal connection, but is there more to why you think that, that this is an important issue that, um, uh, that's important to address via legislation? Why, why was this a cause that you were willing to get behind? Well, I see it from, from several points of view. For one thing, I'm an employer, and I notice when young folks come in, they're different than they were 10 years ago. They, they have a hard time focusing. They have a hard time looking in the eye. They're very distracted. They kind of want to pull out their phone almost. You know? I mean, it's, 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 it's made people a little bit different. And I I'm sort of a view the world as a biologist sometimes, and I think about evolution, evolutionary-wise, for thousands and maybe millions of years, we've spent our time looking at each other and listening to each other. And it not only teaches us how to speak and listen, but it teaches us how society works. We observe people interacting with other people, and that really is the foundation of our society. And now we have kids um, growing up in large part without that. You know, they're sitting around looking at their screen, even if they're sitting next to their peers. And then there is the extremely addictive nature of it that's scarier in its own right, because, you know, we're, it, it, it's an addiction in every sense of the word. And it's, uh, you know, for us adults, we can, we're making that choice consciously on some level, and we're responsible for our actions, but for kids, their brains are being wired in the first few years, you know, and, and I believe they're being wired differently as a result of this so much time spent looking at screens instead of other people. And we have no, we're conducting this giant experiment on our kids without any controls or even any real observation. We're not paying any attention to what the effect is on our kids. Yeah, I think that's um, spot on. Mm. And, and when you talk about that face-to-face -face interaction, that's also sort of the, the roots of empathy, right? That's, that's how true. you start yeah. caring about others and being able to understand them a little better and read their emotions. Right. And that seems to me the basis of a, a healthy society if right. people I mean, don't have empathy. I mean, ugh. Good point. You know, really the glue of our society is how we all interact with each other, and we're in danger of losing it. We're yeah. in danger of losing the norms and the, the respect for how we used to interact. And um, Yeah, it's a great concern. Yeah. I and believe I, we'll look back on this 10 years from now and think, why did we wait so long to pay attention? I agree. Yeah, and the other thing that I find very, that, that, that's motivating to me is that kids are saying this is a problem. Mm -hmm. There was a, a study done, I forget if it was a, a survey, I forget if it was either Pew Research or Common Sense Media, and 50% of teenagers admitted that they were addicted, mm. with 60% of parents agreeing. You know, and, and my last guests were uh, Mary and Paul and Councilman Mason Chalk from Kauai, and they've done a bunch of focus groups their um, mission right now is one of them curbing the suicide in Kauai youth. And so they did a bunch of focus groups, not with any intention of talking about screens, but it came up in every uh -huh. single focus group. Not the only yeah. thing that came yeah. up, uh -huh. but every single time for adding to anxiety and depression. Mm. And so in my opinion, you know, if, if kids are aware of this and, and are speaking out and saying they're addicted and... To me, it's like a most fundamental uh, moral responsibility of a society to protect our kids, you know? Yeah, I think that's a very good point, yeah. Yeah. Um, so where in the process is the bill now? Well, as you mentioned, the bill just reached a deadline, I think, today, which it didn't meet. 
It, it did sail through the Senate without any no votes and one House committee with no, without any no votes. It did not get heard in the House Finance Committee. You know, at the end of session, a lot of things come to a crunch. I can't say why. Sometimes we assume it's got to do with the fact that it was including some money, and money is tight this year as usual, but perhaps especially this year. And then there's other, you know, other issues that come and take up people's attention at the last minute yeah. that may have been a contributing factor. Uh, next, I will continue to push this bill, and we will reintroduce it or push the same on next year. Great. And I will be working more carefully. You know, when a bill, oftentimes a bill takes two or three years to get through, sometimes ten. Right. But what happens is you look at where it stopped and then work on that. So next year I will have, hopefully, have some discussions with the chair of the committee where it didn't get heard and try to uh, encourage her to hear it and see if we can't get over that obstacle. Yeah, that's get fantastic. Line. Yeah. And uh, getting through three or four hearings for first-time legislation, I mean, obviously better if it turned into law, but that's still pretty good, isn't it? It is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, only one out of ten bills pass in the end, and uh, very few that, that were being discussed for the first year passed. Yeah. So, yeah, that is pretty good. That's encouraging. I appreciate you having that optimistic viewpoint about it. That's okay. nice. Yeah. Thanks. And that's a perfect place for a break, and then we'll be right back. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. And we're back. Um, so next I wanted to talk about um, a few of the changes that were made and sort of this uh, disagreement um, that that uh, I personally, in my opinion, have with the Department of Health, but it's not just the Department of Health. It's something that I found time and time again when um, the bill did get through the Senate, but it was amended in a way where they were going to talk less about the actual harms of screen time and just focus on um, encouraging kids to get outside and maybe mentioning something about screen time reduction, but not really talking about the harms of screen time. And I've, I've heard this from other like relevant government departments. So again, it's not just our Department of Health. I even heard it recently. I was really surprised. I talked to a pediatrician who's connected to the AAP, and he had a um, UH child psychiatry student with him. And she was saying, um, he, we were talking about a research paper showing developmental delays for kids with excessive screen time. And she said, but you wouldn't bring that up to a parent because it's sensitive. And I thought that that was so bizarre, because like, not that you shouldn't try to be sensitive, but that's why it's important. Yes. That's why parents should care. So that's right, yeah. Where do you, and in my, we were talking about how convenient screen time is. In my estimation, like, for a parent to take it seriously and really put the effort to try to curb it, they need to be warned about the harms versus just being told without a real explanation, like, use it less. Where do you fall on that? Well, I also, I mean, it, did, it didn't get to a final form, but when they diluted it a little bit to talk about, you know, screen time takes away from physical activity and being outdoors, that's fine, but that's not what our focus was on this bill. There's plenty of messaging and research about the need to get exercise, and right. I would hate to have this just get lost in that shuffle. I'm all for getting kids outside and exercise, but what we're trying to focus on here 
is the actual harm to our brains and our psychology that comes from this. And that's a subject that's virtually untouched. And, and, and yes, you're right. I mean, we can't be shy about talking to parents about these hazards. It would be like saying, I could go back to the opioid thing, because I think it's such an addiction issue. Mm -hmm. It would be like giving somebody their first course of opioids and saying, and not mentioning, oh, by the way, they're addicting and it can ruin your life. Because it's sensitive, you can't, you, you just can't do that. That's contrary to the, the public good. You know, you have to talk about the issues. You have to, as you said, give parents the information they need to first of all be concerned and then justify their actions and, and, and be committed to making a change because every day the child is going to push against that and we, you have to have reasons to be committed to change. Yeah, I think the opioid example is, is, is a perfect example because you don't tell someone just like, no, don't take more than you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. You need to explain, as you said, like it's highly addictive. It can ruin your life, mm -hmm. um, or else if you don't have a reason and it's kind of fun, and you're yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I'll just take another one, right? It's, it's too easy. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, and I think that I'm glad that you're focusing on the addiction point too, and and that that's not um, lost on you because it is so important, and it is something that, yeah, it it it's. I think one of the most important things, because if you look at addicts, it tends to ruin your life. You can't derive joy from uh, relationships or things outside of the addiction. And I think that's one of the real concerns, right, is that kids, we're seeing that in kids, whether it's with video games. and We are seeing that. And I think we're seeing an explosion of suicides among, uh, amongst our youth. And we don't exactly know what that is, but it would be very foolish and unscientific to ignore the fact that that's correlated with this, you know, exponential increase in screen time. Absolutely. And gaming, it, too. I mean, both things are related, but... Yeah, yeah. And, and it coincides so well. Um, I believe it was between 20, 2007 and 2015 that the suicide rate for teenage girls doubled. Mm. Um, for, su for boys, it was up 30%, which is still very substantial. Mm. And it was right in the middle of that period in 2012 that the saturation of smartphones among teens hit 50%. Mm. So um, it would be quite a coincidence if it wasn't connected. And I'm not saying that that's, uh, you know, completely conclusive, 100% evidence. But I also find that I'm not sure that that's the right way to think about it. Like, we don't need a 100% sureness that it's causing this. I think that at any, at, with this point, with the evidence that's there, the burden of proof should be that it isn't hurting kids. Right. You know, people often say correlation does not, uh, does not causation. prove causation. But from a scientific point of view, it, what it does say is you better sit up and pay attention. There's something going on here. If one isn't causing the other, then we need to find some other explanation uh, for that correlation. And correlation is meaningful. And I don't, think, I don't think there's any way to avoid the conclusion that these things are related. The screen time use, lack of social skills, lack of social time, lack of social ability Support. is related to depression and suicide. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think... Um, Certainly with correlation, there's even an extra element, like if you have like a, a long time series where there's some correlation, but when there are two sharp rises mm -hmm. at about the same time, right. that's extra um, yeah. Yeah, concerning. Well, or, at the very least, it says we need to look at it. We need to, un we need to find an explanation for it if this, you know. Right. Yeah. And then you add in the fact that, again, with focus groups and kids being aware of it themselves, when you see that data, mm -hmm. kids are saying it themselves, educators are noticing it, parents are talking about it. It's sort of all consistent with each other and coherent. If kids are saying it themselves unprompted while talking about other subjects, that's actually, that, that's big news to me because normally we ignore our bad habits and our addictions and we deny them, you know? True. So if a kid is ready to, to admit to out loud, 
that they have concerns or we have a problem with this, then that's actually kind of profound to me. So I'm glad to hear that, that there's that awareness, but it just shows how deep this issue goes. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, I'm hoping, they're doing such great work over there on Kauai. I'm hoping that we see other, uh, that Oahu sort of see what they're doing and, and follow suit and conduct these um, focus groups with students, and I, I don't think that we ask kids about these issues enough. They have more opinions than yeah. I think a lot of people. I, they, uh, they love, I'm not saying they don't love their social media too. They do, right? They have a love, a conflicted relationship. Mm -hmm. But I think that a lot of adults kind of assume that it's all love. And in fact, it's a lot more complicated, and yeah. they're more aware of the, the pluses and minuses. Mm. Than, uh, than you might assume from yeah. reading about how they love their phones and are always on them. Um, moving a little to back to the fact that you know you have a daughter, mm. and and you know just from your personal experience, how do you see it uh, affect her when she's on it, when it's taken away from her? What do you notice? Well, one first thing I'd say I notice is the same thing that's true of adults that are on their phones or iPads is they don't pay attention anymore to what's going on around them. You can ask someone a question, and they, not only don't they answer, they don't even hear it, you know. Uh, and I see that in, in my daughter. If she's on her iPad, I can ask her a question. I can wave a toy in front of her, whatever. It's like... She's completely blind to what's going on around her until you take that away. And then sometimes you go through this little crying or protest period, and then she'll be okay, at least so far. Yeah. But while you're engaged in that, you really are tuning out the rest of the world to a really surprising degree to me. A lot, even more so than what used to be when, when we were just watching TV. When you're watching TV and you ask someone a question, usually they'll answer. Someone's on their iPad, they usually won't answer, you know. And that's once again, it goes to my concern about losing our social skills and our social mores. I think we're losing the actual fabric of our society yeah. if we are not paying attention to the people around us and what they're saying to us. I yeah. mean, that's really important to me. We have to we have to listen to each other, Absolutely. pay attention to each other. Um, for us to have a, a, a society that works or is based on any kind of compassion or empathy, as you said. Yeah. How, how long does it take her to get over it, typically? Her little protest periods, how long do those last? If it's up to me, it's probably five or ten minutes, and my wife is better at distracting her right <laughs> away. So if you take it away and then, oh, look, here's some, something you know, else. <laughs> right. Uh, so I could, I could get better at it, but I, so it, I think it's, so far it's pretty quick. That's good. You know, but she's only three. I mean, really, uh, I'm a little disappointed in myself that I even have allowed her to get to this point because I was aware of this all along. But, it, you know, it's just, as I mentioned, it's just so tempting when you're busy, your tires are here, watch TV for a while or something. So uh, right now she can recover from that and change gears quickly. But I don't know, yeah, I don't know if, what the long-term effects of that is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I do. I mean, I have a lot of empathy for parents. I'm not a parent, but, um, you know, I was, well, I have a three-year-old nephew who's a lot of energy, adorable, so fun, but, man, they just don't stop. <laughs> and I was in D.C. a few months ago, and I have friends with twin three-year-old boys. Mm. And, uh, yeah, spending a few days with them was certainly like, I can definitely see yes, yeah. how it would be very appealing yes. and almost necessary at some points. Um, to, to take a break. So that's, um, yeah, it's important for awareness. And I mean, I would add too, like I'm not a screen time purist. I don't think that no screen time is necessary or anything like that, but it is so easy yeah. to slip into more than you mean to and more than you realize. I think really we have to get to a point where we sort of have a timer, whether it's on the device or elsewhere, where okay, I'm going to look at a screen for an hour or half an hour, uh, and maybe I'll spend another hour on it later in the evening. But we have to have, I think, those external limits 
and we have to accept them and, and embrace them and enforce them. I don't see any other way around it. I think that's a good first step. I think that's very true. And then there are some apps out there now. Um, the Screen Time app that Apple just rolled out last year um, allows you to track it and actually allows you to set limits mm. for your kids. So that's cool. It took yes. them a while to do that, but finally at the end of last year they did. And then there's Moment, which is for tracking. I'm really with you there. I think that um, just the willpower it takes and energy and time, it's a Herculean task. And mm. if you have technology that's able to set yeah. those limits. I'm reminded of, I went to a little uh, workshop Boy, this is probably 10, maybe. When did the iPhone come out? At least 10 years ago. 2007. Okay, yeah, so a little more than 10 years ago. So the iPhone was kind of new at this time, and the, the guy who was traveling, he wrote, he writes for Mac Magazine. I can't remember his name. But he, and he was uh, doing a presentation about the iPhone. It was new, it was exciting, it was fun. And someone asked him, well, do you have any concerns about this? Yes, I have a big concern. I'm concerned that it's one more way that we're all distracting ourselves yeah. uh, from each other and we're all being absorbed in some little thing. And this was, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And looking back on it, he was so right on. And this was an Apple advocate. This was a technology right. enthusiast who clearly saw this, this emerging problem. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so interesting, too, the, that Steve Jobs, you know, limited his kids tech exactly. and Bill Gates, like mm -hmm. the people that see ahead and really get the industry, mm -hmm. um, they had that sense. I think that's early. very telling. And those guys not only know more about tech than we do, but they're really smart. Yep. You know, and I think that's very telling that, that, that they severely limit their kids' screen time. I think they didn't get an iPhone, iPhone until they were 12 or 14 or something. And, you know, that that's, it speaks volumes that the strongest advocates for these technologies realize that we ought to be careful about our kids and what it's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's just one more piece of evidence when we were talking about the correlation and kids mentioning it and educators bringing it up. And then the, you have the heads of the technology industry themselves limiting it. Mm -hmm. You know, it all points in the same direction. It does, yeah. Which is why I feel, again, like the burden of proof now is like, prove it doesn't harm kids, because there's enough there for... So um, just to, to sum up, um, thinking about solutions, I think that the bill is a, a, a great measure, and that's certainly one solution. And it, it sounds like, I guess you were talking about, you know, um, apps and, and timing for, for parents. Well, you know, you don't need an app to set yourself an hour and limit. You just need to have a little awareness. And uh, I don't know that we ought to re rely on an app to tell us to get away from the app. You know, it's all so ironic. Of course, if an alarm can go off, that's useful. But, um, you know, just because the bill didn't pass this year doesn't mean our Department of Health shouldn't become concerned with this and become active about it. You know, they point. tend to not do anything unless they're forced to, unless you give them money for it. But that's not their mandate. Their mandate is to pay attention to things affecting our health. And I would think that uh, the Department of Education would have its concerns as well in this. And there's no reason. Nobody needs to wait for a bill to pass to decide to, to take some action on it. I, I hope that we can convince the Department of Health and Department of Education to take this seriously and begin to do something about it. I agree with that. Yeah. I, that's a, a really good point, mm -hmm. that this is a, an issue that's serious enough both on the health front and on the education front, that it's really time for the, the government to step up and to support parents. It's, mm -hmm. Everyone likes to blame parents. To me, it's a, really, it's a whole society issue, and parents need more support and better information. It takes a whole village to ruin a kid. <laughs> What a perfect way to end it. But, uh, but um, maybe we'll just um, add, add a, a slightly a positive note to that, that it also takes a, a village to, to protect our kids and warn our kids. And I think that the, the bill you put forward is a great, a great start, the, the bill we put forward. And, and now it is on the radar mm -hmm. of the Department of Health. <coughs> mm -hmm. And they do say that they see this. So... You're right. Um, introducing the bill again is great, but government can act right. even without that. And I, I commend you, Lauren, for uh, 
really you're our state's biggest advocate on this issue. And, and looking back on it, you're going to be one of the heroes in trying to uh, call attention to this. So thank, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate that. And thank and you. And this show is no small part of it. It's very important that we're doing this. And appreciate Think Tech for giving you this forum. Me it's too. Great. Yeah. Thank you to Think Tech and, yeah. and to Jay Fidel. Good. So. Um, well, thank you so much for coming here to talk about this with me and for your um, willingness and advocacy in, in promoting the bill and, and speaking candidly and, and publicly about it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, this is Lauren Pear signing off for Screen Time Reset.